Hello, good morning, and uh, uh, thank you for the invitation. I am going to talk briefly about how the Copyright Review Committee, which has made some suggestions for reform of copyright, how the, um, some of the suggestions uh, might have an impact uh, on the Creative Commons philosophy. Now, the, the process of reform of copyright is ongoing not just in Ireland but worldwide. First in time, was uh, Canada. Um, so there, it's the nice Canadian maple leaf, and they called their uh, recent Copyright Act, which took about six years all told to implement, uh, the uh, Copyright Modernization Act, um, which shows that they felt that the rebalancing and reform of copyright was a matter of modernization. Um, the UK was second in time, the Hargreaves process uh, uh, called Digital Opportunity, um, reported about three years ago, and the UK government is slowly implementing the Hargreaves recommendations. Um, next in time is the Australian um, proposals for reform, and they are very radical, far more radical than uh, Hargreaves, which in turn was more radical than Canada. Um, Australia reported just before Christmas, the Attorney General says that he will publish the report sometime before the end of March. Uh, so he has sat on it for e effectively four months before publishing it. But if the uh, report is similar to the, uh, to the consultation paper, then it will be very radical and allow a lot of the kind of sharing uh, as a matter of basic copyright law that Creative Commons is trying to encourage. Uh, and their report is called Copyright and the Digital Economy. Um, the European Union has recently announced uh, a similar wide-ranging, uh, or potentially wide-ranging, review of the European Copyright Acquis. Uh, and they're all heading in the same direction. They're all looking at things like modernization, at digital underpinning, at uh, market forces, and looking not just at the um, one or two uh, constituencies within the copyright community, but at the needs and interests of a whole range of constituencies within the copyright community. Now, in Ireland, uh, the Copyright uh, Review Committee published a consultation paper um, 18 months ago and a report just before Christmas in which we made uh, a number of significant recommendations, and I will talk to the recommendations that are relevant to uh, Creative Commons here this morning. Uh, and all of our recommendations we suggested um, uh, should be implemented by means of a Copyright and Related Rights uh, Innovation Amendment Act, um, and we provided a full draft of that as a bill in the report. Um, and you, you get to see in, the two, in these last two slides uh, copyright and innovation and modernizing copyright. Again, we are part of the same process uh, in Canada, uh, in the UK, in Australia, and in Europe. Uh, the reform of copyright is for modernization and innovation reasons by and large, hence the innovation uh, subtitle in the title of the proposed bill. Now, the first thing that we did was to acknowledge that there's a whole range of interests um, in the copyright community. Uh, that the first obvious interest is the interest of the creator, uh, the person who makes the uh, copyright work um, and uh, uh, comes together with others, say in, in, in a publishing company or a music company or a movie company, uh, to make a, a copyright work. And then seeks to monetize that copyright work uh, by means of, for example, licensing or sales. This is the uh, logo of the Irish Copyright Licensing Agency. Um, the next uh, category of uh, interested parties are the intermediaries, the Googles and the YouTubes and so on, uh, by which we access the internet and through which we uh, interact on the internet. So uh, social networking sites, um, uh, are a very important part. I mean, for example, I was tweeting before I came up, um, and some of you, many of you, are doing so too. So the, the intermediaries that are providing our access to the internet uh, and our sharing online. <coughs> uh, then the poor unfortunate put-upon user, uh, you know, 
all of you, or all of us, um, uh, those who are innovating online. One of, the whole, one, one, of, one of the big reasons for copyright reform is to uh, encourage digital innovation. Uh, and finally, uh, the heritage industry, uh, museums, galleries, archives, and other bodies similar to that uh, that the minister might recognize. Uh, and all of these constituencies have different interests. And sometimes the interests align and sometimes the interests compete. And what the various reform bodies are trying to do, um, uh, on foot of general principles and on foot of the submissions received by them, uh, is to balance those interests as against the overriding policy of modernizing uh, for innovation. Um, so the uh, first significant suggestion that we made is that the Irish copyright community should establish a copyright council um, as an independent and self-funding body uh, with a widely representative board, which would have a whole range of functions in terms of education, advocacy, uh, and advice, as well as providing a digital exchange, a one-stop shop, if you like, for um, engaging with licensing, uh, providing a, an alternative to dispute resolution mechanism that would be uh, quick and cheap, um, and providing uh, an Orphan Works licensing solution. More importantly, from the point of view of Creative Commons, one of the uh, principal objects of the, the Copyright Council, as recommended in the bill, uh, is to promote creativity, sharing, open access, and information. And if you look at the front page of uh, the Creative Commons website, you will see that one of the functions of Creative Commons is to develop, support, and uh, steward legal and technical infrastructure that maximizes digital creativity, sharing, and information. So that one of the functions, uh, uh, one of the principal objects, there are eight, um, from the protection of copyright and freedom of expression right through to um, uh, this last one, promoting creativity, sharing, open access, and innovation. But one of them, uh, one of the principal objects, aligns with the philosophy of Creative Commons. Now, what I want to do, those three, um, uh, those three phrases, the um, creativity, sharing, and innovation, uh, which are the part of the title of today's conference and part of the uh, copyright, uh, sorry, part of the uh, Creative Commons philosophy, I want to look at uh, some recommendations in the report under those three headings. So first, creativity. Um, one of the fundamental insights in copyright is that creativity is in incentivized and rewarded um, by uh, giving the copyright creator the copyright monopoly and remedies to enforce that monopoly. And that is the, the, the basic starting point of the Copyright and Related Rights Act 2000. And by and large, that um, encouragement and that protection is, is well served by the Copyright and Related Rights Act 2000. By and large, there are arguments uh, as to how it can be improved on the margins. But one of the significant uh, and repeated uh, suggestions that we got in the submissions uh, to the uh, Copyright Review Committee was that there are significant problems being faced specifically by photographers because of the ease of reproduction of digital photographs um, and that uh, the, um, the, on, the, the online space is having a significant impact on uh, uh, digital photographic creativity. Um, and one of the solutions that was proposed to us um, was to uh, add specific protection to the metadata um, relating to uh, digital photographs. Metadata is simply data about data. It's, it's kind of like the, uh, the title page in a book or the uh, index in a, in, in, in a catalogue. Um, uh, so if we take a look at this photograph of a photographer taking a photograph, uh, being photographed by by you guys here and by the video camera, so it all gets very meta. Um, here is an element of its metadata on Flickr, uh, the kinds of information uh, about the photograph that is embedded with the photograph. Um, and in the uh, copyright uh, report, we 
provide a new legal definition of metadata, which, though I am open to uh, correction, is the first time that this phrase will have been defined in legislation anywhere. Um, uh, we ex recommend that it is explicitly included in the definition of the work that is protected by copyright and that to remove or alter the metadata would be the equivalent of an alteration of a copyright work and therefore amount to an infringing adaptation. So to the extent that uh, copyright law reform is needed for the purposes of enhancing creativity, to that extent at least we have tried to accommodate the special needs of photographers. As to sharing, uh, the European Union Copyright Directive for the Information Society contains a whole range of private copying exceptions, for example, format shifting. Um, and it is these private copy, copying exceptions that are at the basis, are, are at the, uh, the starting point of the possibility of, of sharing uh, copyright uh, material. Um, uh, and uh, we have recommended that that range of um, private copying exceptions uh, permitted by the European Union Directive uh, should be accommodated in Irish law. Um, for example, the idea of parody. At the moment, a parody is an infringement of copyright because you, you are substantially taking the original work. You might be transforming it in some way, but you're still substantially taking the original work and therefore infringing copyright in the original work. <coughs> the European Union Directive allows for parody to be um, uh, an exception to the copyright protections, and we recommended that it should be as well in the uh, Copyright uh, Review Committee report. Another recommendation that we made in the Copyright Review Committee report um, around the area of sharing is in respect of non-commercial user-generated content. And all of the reviews uh, to which I have referred, to the extent that they have made recommendations or implemented recommendations, um, have implemented these um, private copying exceptions, and in particular in respect of parody and non-commercial user-generated content on sites like uh, YouTube and Facebook and Flickr and so on. Uh, one of the most controversial suggestions that we made uh, is that uh, linking should not constitute an infringement of copyright um, unless the uh, user uh, or the linker knows or ought to have known that it was linking to an infringing copy. Uh, we also recommended that the reproduction of very small snippets of text reasonably adjacent to the text uh, to the link should not infringe copyright. We also recommended a special innovation exception to encourage innovation. Um, but the American doctrine that has driven most of the innovation development uh, in the US is the uh, fair use doctrine. And we were asked to look at the fair use doctrine. Uh, and we did. But we felt that the American doctrine didn't, wasn't particularly helpful. For all sorts of reasons, it wasn't particularly helpful. And we suggested instead a specific Irish uh, uh, specialist, narrower fair use doctrine, um, which is based on the other existing exceptions in the statutes. Um, it would turn on the matters that the court considers relevant, including uh, nine factors, not just four, as in the United States. So in these ways, the recommendations of the Copyright Review Committee um, have engaged with um, a whole range of influences and interests, and for the purposes of today, I have taken out those that relate to the uh, Creative Commons philosophy and flagged those up for you. Thank you very much indeed, and happy Copyright Week. <laughs>